Welcome to Kerbal Space Program. We've got a rocket built here designed to launch a small probe. Basically just a communication relay. Not even a relay technically. Just a commsat. Give you a brief rundown. Four of the smallest solar panels. Four of the smallest battery packs. Four of the smallest antenna. The smallest inline reaction wheel which is under command and control that will let you steer the probe once it's on its own you can't thrust but you can orient it if you need to you know for instance turn solar panels toward the sun We've got a regular stack decoupler the 800 unit fuel tank Under that we have the swivel engine, another decoupler, another 800 fuel tank, four hammer boosters, four winglets, and these are the aviator winglets which have control surfaces so they actually move rather than just being a fixed piece of hardware. Aerodynamic nose cones, Pretty basic, pretty basic. It's the William Sat Mark I. Alright, let's launch it. See what I can do about getting it into a reasonable orbit. I did a test run of this one a few minutes ago and had a quite a surprising amount of fuel left over after getting into a into a stable orbit. I always like to aim the camera at the probe head seems to give a, a better better view seems to make the most sense anyway turn stability on throttle all the way up even though my first stage is just solid fuel boosters we're gonna bank to the east already approaching a hundred meters a second just very very gradually I'm just tapping the D key start trying to lean the rocket over it will become much more controllable in the second stage alright let's drop these boosters there we go if you'll notice how quickly I can now start start my gravity turn. Again, I just kind of do this by feel. The only rule I've really stuck with is that I start leaning a little bit after 100 meters a second. Still doing quite well. Got more than half a tank on our second stage. We have this exact same setup, minus the wings, again, as the third stage. Let's lean on over a little more. Take a look. Climbing pretty high. During my gravity turn, I, a lot of times I try to keep the dot on my attitude indicator just just to the right of the prograde marker. That seems to indicate to me that it's constantly laying out its or flattening out its curve. All right, there we go. Jettison that stage. At this point, I like to use the autopilot to lock prograde. Take a look at the map. Watch my apoapsis climb. It's already, we'll go ahead and stop it at about 150,000 meters. These options right here are available. Some of them are available on higher end probe heads. Some of them are not available. Just different probe heads give you different things. For instance, you can click this and it will lock prograde. I'm not thrusting, so this won't hurt anything. See, so watch retrograde. Notice how the ship flips around. You can see it line up on the nav ball, but we don't want that. Let's flip back around. 92 kilometers up. Rapidly, rapidly climbing. 96. 
So once we break 100, okay, that'll get us there. We can use a faster warp speed. Warp up close to the apoapsis. Make sure we're staying locked prograde. It will drift during the warp. I'm not sure why. Doesn't seem logical. But as soon as the time warp is complete, it flips right back around. So now that I'm pointing prograde, let's wait till we get. Okay, we're almost there. Full throttle. Again, circularizing the orbit. You can see the orbital paths of my relay network. Keeping the apoapsis at 151,000 meters. Let's go ahead and start slowing down the throttle. You'll notice I drop it to half. The further along into the, your burn you are, the quicker the results will appear. So it makes it a little more controllable to back off, off of your throttle. Alright, now watch. They'll meet at about halfway here. And cut the engines. Let's see where we're at. 130. 168. Not great, but fine. Let's go ahead and warp around to the apoapsis here. We'll bring the 130 up to 168. I do find that I really wish that this text was not over top of the icon. It's rather annoying. Okay, here we are. Let's turn off ComNet visualization. It's a little bit distracting. 45 seconds out from our apoapsis. Looking, pointing prograde. And this will just take little taps. Little taps is all this is going to take. See, just barely, I just touch shift. 168, 149, 159, 168, 165, 168, 166. Oops, went a little further than I meant to. No, that's not bad. 167 and 169. That's pretty good orbit. That's within two kilometers of being perfectly circular. I don't know if that ever really matters in this game or not. So now, see, we still have maybe a little bit, maybe a quarter tank of liquid fuel left in this if you wanted to further adjust your orbit. I don't know that this could get you to the moon in this exact configuration. What I like to do, I don't know if it really matters, is using the autopilot, I will choose radial out. And that will essentially point the stage that I'm about to jettison straight toward the Earth, or toward Kerbin, I guess. So let's release. And it should deorbit because of that downward thrust, and then self destruct once it makes impact on the surface. Let's take a look at our little satellite here. You can right click each of these to extend the antenna, which as far as I know you have to do to get full functionality. I've got four on here. Action groups are a good little trick for things like this. They're really easy to make. Okay, so there's our satellite. See, we still have our little reaction wheel on here. It's almost silly. Watch this. Just nothing. Nothing. Just instant instant reactions. But yeah, there you go. That's how I get a satellite into orbit. I'm going to revert. Revert this flight. Go back to vehicle assembly. Just for the fun of it going to show you my relay sat satellite launcher. It's a much bigger system. Again, in sandbox mode, I have all the parts. I don't really remember the names because this is the only rocket I've built with these, but we've got basically huge fuel tank, huge engine, two huge fuel tanks, huge engine, big, big, big wings, a decoupler, a protective shell that is then my main relay satellite here multiple banks of a very high capacity battery, a reaction wheel, 
a high-end probe head, six extendable solar panels, and the largest relay antenna. It's pretty easy to get into orbit it, because of the amount of thrust it has. It tends to establish a pretty high orbit very easily. So yeah, going to wrap that up here, I guess. Hope this helps you in some manner. <laughs>